Today we are gonna quickly make a springy, magnetic Tinkercad fish clip. So let's get cracking. Today we are gonna start with a template. I need you to type bit.ly slash fish clip to get to it. Of course, the design is set to copy and tinker, so don't forget the golden rule of Tinkercad. Give a reaction before you copy and tinker. So when it launches, you will have this template that we're gonna use to make the awesome squeezable fish. I'm gonna just show you real quickly. If we do control D, we can ungroup this and you can see the parts. If we double click this, you've got a hole being cut from a tube. If we click over here, you can see the tubes parameters. I've got a wall thickness of 1.5. Of course, I made it smooth. The radius was nine, so that means it's 18 across. If we click outside, it finishes that edit. If we double click this part to edit as well, simple rectangle, its measurements are eight by 20. And then right here, we have got a sketch. It is a 10 by 10 circle. Don't forget the awesome technique. If you make a diamond in sketch and double click it, it makes it perfectly smooth, which is a super cool trick to get your circles. Let's actually use that technique right now to get the fish's head. So when I bring out this part, I'm gonna set it in front of our cutting tool and I'm lining it up with the grid. Notice it fits 20 by 20. Now the grid is lined up perfectly. Now, as I said a minute ago, we're gonna make one of those circles by clicking a centimeter in each direction. Click, 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 and snap. When we double click it, boom, it's a perfect circle. With that circle completed, now let's hit finish sketch. I'm gonna simply adjust the measurements. Instead of 20, I'm gonna make this 28. And instead of 20 here, I'm gonna make this 32 and press enter. I'm gonna set this to eight millimeters thick. I printed a bunch of these at four and six, and I found that when I switched to eight, it has much more strength. You can have a lot of fun adjusting that as well. So with this set to eight, I'm gonna set this to nine, just so it's easier to see how it's going to cut out. Let's select them both and do L for a line, and I'm just gonna choose center, and I'm gonna choose center. Now we do not want it like this, but we're gonna simply nudge it back. If I switch to a five millimeter nudge, that is the easiest way, simply click on that hole, and let's go back two clicks, or 10 millimeters. I'm gonna switch to the one millimeter nudge, and let's move it back so really it's 11 in that direction. That gives us about two millimeters all the way around, which is what I want. Now we are gonna build the tail with this heart. Simply bring it out and we need to rotate it 90 degrees. Notice if you stay inside that blue ring, it does 22 and a half degrees at a time. If you hold shift, it does 45, so it only takes two clicks. Let's take our cool heart shape now and change it from 28 to 25 and press enter. That just makes it fit the shape a little better. Of course, we do need to adjust the height as well. So I'm gonna make that eight so it matches. Select these two pieces, do L for a line, make that hole the boss and choose center. And then we need to nudge this in so that it's going to connect right in here. Notice it's just touching a little bit. You can pick how much, I'm gonna give it that much strength. Now, if you do want a smoother tail, you could of course draw one with sketch i have got a tutorial that shows how to do that i'll make sure there's a link up here we do need to cut out this tail i'm going to do that using this sketch as well control d make it a hole i'm going to make it quite a bit thinner i'm going to go all the way down to about 16 or 18. notice when i bring this into place that leaves about two millimeters on each side i do want to choose l and align it just like that at this point, friends, you can grab it and do control G to group. All right, so let's cut out those jaws. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up with two grid lines. So now it lines up just like that. I'm gonna bring out the sketch tool and I'm gonna line it up as close to those as well. It's not quite perfect. You can see that middle did not work. So I'm gonna simply hit finish. And now I'm gonna grab these two shapes and do L for a line. And I want that front edge, and I also want it to be centered. Right now it is on top because I cruised it there. If I hit D to drop, it's at the base. And now I can double click this sketch and check this out. We are perfectly lined up to make the teeth. Now we're gonna cut the teeth out so it works like this. We're gonna make sure we're in at least one millimeter. 
And then we're simply going to go down two, up two, down two, up two, down two, up two, down two, up two, until we get to the front. And then we're just going to exit. And we're going to come down, making sure that we go two past. Once again, we're going to enter. Notice I'm coming in and down the exact same way. It's that slick and it's that easy. Oops, if you miss, fix it afterwards. And then I'm going to exit to this one, I believe. And I'm going to come out here, come out here, and I need to finish it. So, of course, I've got the mistake. Now I can grab that point and get it where it was supposed to be. That also means this one needs to be right here. I can take these and adjust them however I want. I'm going to choose to make these curves. Right now, they're straight lines. If I press the number two, they are curves. And then I can take these points and adjust them so they work the way I want. I think I want that to be rounded like that. And I think I want this one to be rounded like this and pulling that down. If we hit finish sketch, now we've got that shape that we can cut out. We simply need to make it a hole and then do control G to group and see if we like it. I think I want this to come straight through here. So let's simply double click and click on our shape and choose edit sketch. I'm going to switch my nudge to just a fraction. I'm going to make it 0.1. And I'm going to nudge that one up. And I'm going to take this curve and hit the number one so it snaps to a line. I did not want to grab that handle, so I'm going to do Control Z. I do want to grab that point, and I want it to be straight. I want this to come up here and follow the same trick. Now I've got an extra point, so I'm going to just bring this one down to be that spot and bring this one up to be this spot. Of course, this curvy line, I'm going to press the number one to make it a straight line, just like that. And I can adjust that tooth so it exits the way I want. When I hit finish sketch, you'll see the sketch is adjusted. And this pink area means we are edited. If I click anywhere outside, that editing is complete. You have now got a fish where when you squeeze the tail, it'll actually open and you can use it as a chip clip. How cool is that? Let's real quickly give them an eyeball. I'm going to just bring out the whole cylinder. I'm going to maximize its sides. I'm going to do shift squeeze and I'm going to set it to about size five or six. Anywhere in there is cool. Of course, I do need to make it taller than eight millimeters so that it pokes out and we can cut it. So friends, I bought magnets on Amazon. I'm going to set the sides to max and I'm going to shift squeeze one of these corners. The magnets are six millimeters. So I'm going to type 6.2 for the size I want the hole to be for me to put the magnet. Now the magnet is two millimeters high. So I'm going to give it 2.5 millimeters of room this way. I want the magnet to be right in here, but I want it to be raised up off the face. I'm going to raise it up a half millimeter. You'll see right now I'm going to do control up and then I'm going to do flat view and top view and let's move it into place. You can see there is room all the way around it. It is exactly lined up. If we click on our shape and do T for transparent, you can see how it was hiding inside there. Let's quickly go back to perspective view. I'm going to click on this shape and shut off transparency. And then I am not going to group any of these. This skill was taught to me by Deirdre in Make Inspires. Check this out. If we select it, it says three shapes. We're going to choose export and I'm going to export the three shapes as an STL. Notice I did not group those. Now we are going to call this magnetic fish. I'm going to delete the word template and let's hit save. At this point, we're going to bounce to Bamboo Lab Studio. I'm going to hit add and in the 3D modeling folder, there is my magnetic fish clip. I'm going to swap colors to orange just because that seems like a better color for a fish. And then here's the magic part. We're going to slice the plate and we're going to find that hole. Notice I've got the slider here that we can move down after we slice it and check it out right there is the hole. Now we've got the full hole. I'll zoom in so you can see it a little better. This is where it's starting to seal. 
So we simply want to find that location, which was three. I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a pause. I'm going to re-slice the plate. Bingo, slice is okay. It is going to be a 21 minute print, even with heating up. Let's hit print plate, double check our colors and send it to the 3D printer. Of course, after a moment, it bounces to the device menu, takes a little bit of time to download. Of course, once that completes, we can hit play and monitor the rest of the process from afar. All right, so here we are just before the pause. Of course, now we can open it up. Love how far away it is so we can simply drop our little magnet inside just like that. And bingo, press play to restart it. And check it out not much later, we've got an awesome little fish clip with jaws that open. Extra bonus, it's magnetic. Friends, there you have it, a fantastic little fish that you can squeeze and the jaws open and we add a magnet while the printer's printing. How cool is that? Now, if you're looking closely, my magnet was not lined up in version one. Of course, by the time you saw this tutorial, we were messing with at least version three. Friends, as I wrap up, I do want to say thank you so much to my supporters on Patreon. Don't forget you can learn more from the bit.ly up above or the link in the description. Finally, friends, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget every time you hit that like button, share a video, add a comment down below, or hit subscribe. You're helping HL Mod Tech get just a little bit bigger, which absolutely makes my day. Friends, have a glorious day and keep tinkering.